Hello, today I'm going to be showing you some things you can do with an old first generation Apple TV and just perhaps you might even breathe some new life into it. Let's quickly look at the ports on the rear. You have a standard two prong AC power cable, a single USB port, a 10100 Ethernet, HDMI, component video, analog audio, and optical audio. Now it's worth mentioning that it does not officially support composite video for older TVs. However, you can get black and white video by attaching to the green connector here. And if you're really serious, there's actually a software hack that you can do which will enable this port to actually output full color composite video. Let's take a look at the guts of the Apple TV. It has an Intel Pentium M CPU running at 1 GHz. It also has 256 megabytes of onboard RAM, which is not upgradable. And for video, it has an NVIDIA GeForce Go 7300. It also came with your choice of a 40 or 160 gigabyte hard drive. I'd also like to point out that it is possible to use any old standard DVI capable computer monitor with your Apple TV, which is what I'm going to be doing today, using an HDMI to DVI cable like this one. Just plug the HDMI into the Apple TV and the other end into your DVI monitor. Since DVI does not have audio, uh, you'll need to use a regular audio cable like this one and connect to the audio ports on the Apple TV and into your monitor. I will also point out that if you go this route, you'll quickly discover that when you go to play movies, you'll hear sound, but the picture will go black. And the reason for that is because most of the stuff you're going to download from iTunes is going to have that stupid digital rights management bullcrap on it, and uh, the DVI connector uh, does not support the encryption method necessary to display that. However, that won't be a problem with what I'm going to be showing you here in a minute. So let's talk about the firmware. Technically, it runs a specialized version of the Macintosh OS 10.4.7. Now. With the original firmware, it was designed primarily to play videos from your iTunes library. You could not run Netflix or Hulu or any other streaming video service other than YouTube or Vimeo. Alright, believe it or not, I actually bought one of these when they first came out and uh, I actually returned it to the store the next day. And as neat as the device was, the main feature it was lacking for me was it would not play any files um, that I had recorded with digital cameras. Um, or ripped from DVDs. Now, you know, I have decades worth of uh, home videos that have been recorded in a variety of formats and then uh, converted into MP4 files. And, um, you know, I've got uh, a lot of other videos that I'd ripped from my own DVD collection. And uh, I, just, I just couldn't play them on there without going through a very tedious process of converting them all over into an iTunes friendly format and then importing them. And uh, not only would that be time consuming, but it would lose a little bit of quality doing that. And I just, I just didn't want to do it. So instead, I wound up buying a Western Digital Live TV because it offered this exact feature. You can literally attach to any network share in your house and play just about any file format imaginable. Plus, it offered streaming media from places like Netflix and Hulu. Alright, believe it or not, today there are at least two, possibly even three, alternative operating systems that you can run on your first generation Apple TV. Um, they're all free, they're open source, they're Linux based and um, they can run completely from a USB stick without modifying anything on the Apple TV. And I've already prepared this USB stick with a product called OpenELEC, which is a, basically a, runs XBMC, and uh, I'm going to show you how easy this is. Just put it into the USB port and power cycle the Apple TV. It will boot straight into the OpenELEC and you can use the standard Apple remote to control it. The menus are very fast and responsive and there are like a hundred different apps that you can install on this thing at the click of a button. But the best feature of this new firmware is that I can select a network share and pick any sort of video file I want to play and it will just play without question. So let me show you how easy it is to install an app on this thing. So let's say I want the Facebook Media app, which allows you to view all of the photos on your Facebook account. Just click the app and then install, and look, it's already done. And here's an example of one of the little games you can install. Uh, it can be played with a mouse or the remote control. One thing you can do to make this thing easier to operate is to use a USB hub. Sorry, the uh, TARDIS hub is the only one I had handy that wasn't being used somewhere else. So basically just plug the hub into your USB port and then you can put your USB flash drive into the hub. Now you have enough ports available to connect a mouse and a keyboard. As you can see, the mouse actually works perfectly and uh, even the scroll wheel works. 
The keyboards certainly speed things up when you need to type something in, especially compared to using the on-screen keyboard. Now, the only downside to these open source operating systems is that they will still not allow you to play Netflix, Amazon, or Hulu. And um, the reason is simple because those are proprietary streaming services and they would require a proprietary closed source application to handle that. And uh, because this is open source, we're likely to never see um, that feature available, which is unfortunate. And the great thing is you can just remove the USB stick whenever you're done and your Apple TV will go back to being exactly like it was before. Now, if you decide that you really like uh, the new operating system and you have no desire to use the original anymore, you can actually overwrite the hard drive so that um, so the Apple TV will boot up straight to the new operating system without having to use your USB port for that. And um, even if you decide later that you don't want that, it's not that difficult to uh, restore the hard drive back to the factory firmware. Uh, you can download, well, there's several different ways to do it, but the way I did is I downloaded a program called Apple Pie. And uh, Apple Pie was actually meant for writing uh, images designed for the Raspberry Pi, but uh, it will also do USB images and it'll put anything you want uh, on there. And uh, I actually created a, a USB stick that has the original Apple firmware, which you can download on the internet, by the way, and uh, you can just uh, blast it right back on there. So I actually played around a little bit with trying to get a Linux desktop running, uh, like a minimal form of Ubuntu or something like that, on this machine. And, uh, you know, I was hoping maybe I could do uh, something with it, like uh, make a main machine so we can play emulated arcade games or something like that on it. But um, one of the problems I ran into is that, that it has 256 megs of RAM, and it's very difficult to get anything done with 256 megs of RAM with modern day software. and. Um, you know, even the Raspberry Pi has 512 megs. So I would venture to say that it is possible if someone smarter than me wanted to make a Linux desktop distribution that would run on the Apple TV and um, actually have like, you know, some games and stuff that you could play. I think it could be done, but uh, I'm just not quite smart enough to do it. Uh, the one last thing I will mention about this thing is it does get hot. I actually measured it at one point, just the top surface of the device at 117 degrees. So uh, make sure you put this thing in a ventilated area.